Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you remember back to a few videos ago, I made a 3D printed dead blow hammer with replaceable, um, you can screw the ends off and screw on it ends of different materials. And the whole time I was doing this, and I think I mentioned it, I was thinking, what's going to be the best type of cap for that? This is obviously just it's either PLA or PLA+. Plus. But I thought, how can I test the impact of this filament? And of course, my first thought was just to make different hammerheads and start smacking things. But that's not very scientific, is it? So my next thought was, let's build some kind of machine. Oh, and I'll put a link above to the video on making the hammer if you're interested. But anyway, my next thought was some kind of machine. And I thought of, well, you know, maybe I could make a cannon and fire a cylindrical printed slug of plastic into a concrete block or a steel plate. And I'm no stranger to making cannons. I've made acetylene cannons, propane cannons, air cannons, gunpowder cannons, lighter fluid cannons. You name it, I've probably made, it, I've made a cannon into it, or made it into a cannon. I'm also no stranger to getting hurt by cannons, and you know how much the uh, folks who run YouTube love anything to do about guns, so I figured, okay, maybe that's not such a great idea. So my next thought was, let's make something that will swing the hammer. So I actually made a second version of the cannon here, and you see I, whoops, sorry about that. You see I put a hole in the end of it for a pivot, and I put a hook in this end that I could put, you know, a spring in, and I even got different, different strengths of swings and of springs and all that. And the more I started mocking the thing up, the scarier and scarier it was looking to the point where it started making, looking the, making the cannon idea look safe. So I thought, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. Maybe instead of swinging the hammer or shooting the hammer head, I could just drop something heavy on it, which is probably what I should have thought of to begin with. So my idea now was to take some weight and here is a one inch thick piece of steel bar. It's about six inches long, weighs about a pound and a half, something like that. And I tested it from about a foot, foot and a half up on this cheap, this is just cheap PLA. And a few drops shattered it pretty good. So I thought, well, that's going to work good. But how do I do a controlled drop? And I can also grind different profiles into that if I have to. I can grind a ball on one end and a um, chisel on the other if I think it becomes necessary or if it would be fun. So my next thought was, how do I do a controlled drop? And I thought, well, how about if I drop it through a piece of one inch tube? So there's my one inch tube. It fits right in. It drops through it really well. So I thought, let's get some wood. Let's find a way to hook the hammer head down. And I printed this up. This is just a little short threaded piece. I can glue that there. I can attach my piece of wood there, glue it and screw it, and there's a little clamp for it. And then I found these on Thingiverse. These let you put a, like this can be screwed through the hole into the board, and then there are, sorry it's black, it's hard to see, there are some slots for plastic wire ties, and then this will hold my board to there like that, and I'll probably space it out a bit, and that will give me my control drop. And I got a couple of those printed. I can print more. And I'm probably going to wind up drilling and putting a, a hook on the end of it so I can hook a cord to it so I can pull it back up easily or find some other way to pull it back up easily. So that's my idea. I think that's going to work pretty well. I think it will limit the danger and, of course, the fun involved. And while I'm sure it would make a great video to watch me blowing a finger off with a cannon, you know, I like all my fingers, so especially I like both my eyes, too. So I figure, well, we'll just do it this way. So I'm going to try and put this thing together, and then when we get it done, we'll come back and test it. I just want to give some quick props to the guy at Thingiverse, and I'll put a link below who designed these little V-blocks. He designed them so the, um, the, the wire ties would feed right through, and that is really slick. That's um, how I wished I designed things, and hope I do, but all too often, don't. Nice.
Okay, so here is the finished test rig. She's a beauty, is she not? And what I've got is this piece of two foot tube connected to these boards and it's going to drop this roughly one and a half pound steel weight from a height of pretty much two to two and a half feet down onto my hammerhead. Now the hammerhead, let me get that up out of there. May have to set the camera down momentarily. Hang on while I get that out. Okay, the hammerhead screws on. I have a piece down in there to hold the hammer and hammerhead in place. I just thread it down. I have marked my steel bar so that I can hold it at the exact same place every time when I drop it. And I put this hook up there so I can hook the cord over it like that so that um, when I drop it the knot does not get hooked on the edge of of the um, pipe and nothing is dragging it so and also you may have noticed in case my one and a half pound weight isn't enough I have a plan B and a plan C but I don't think they're going to be necessary I don't know if you can see it but one and a half pounds seems to be quite quite um, instructional for PLA and I say I can um, I can grind a rounded ball peen type end into it if necessary so I'm gonna get the camera back on the tripod and we're gonna test this a few times oh and by the way I am gonna be testing these filaments PLA and I'm gonna check test both cheapo PLA because I have noticed that there is a considerable difference in brittleness between cheap PLA and quality PLA and I'm also going to test that Polymaker Polyterra because it seems to have quite a bit of flex in it. Now at 20 bucks a spool it is definitely a premium PLA. I'm also going to test PLA Plus, PETG, ABS, Nylon, ASA, TPU, Polycarbonate and um, I didn't put it down there but I am also going to try and get prints with the Delrin filament I am. Um, I got another idea on how to get at least small prints done successfully out of the Delrin. I have to repair some of my um, some of the 3D printed parts inside my um, enclosure because I printed them out of PLA, and the temperature I got that enclosure up to wrecked some of my PLA printed parts. So I got to do that first. But um, this isn't going to happen today anyway. This is happening on a Saturday. This video anyway. And um, so yeah, let's test this thing. Let me get the camera back on the tripod. Okay, I hope that is a good angle. I am going to put the bar up in the top of the pipe. Let me loop the cord over. And I want to push it back and I'm going to have to reposition the camera, aren't I? Yes, I am. About right there. Because I want that to drop straight down with that cord directly above so the knot doesn't catch. Okay, I'm going to try it on this hammerhead I already beat up. I'm going to hold that directly on the mark. And on the count of three, one, two, three. And that hits it pretty good. Let's try that one more time. One, two, three. All right, excellent. Let's try it with the... Um, with the one that, where is the camera? <laughs> Let's try it with the one that so far is undamaged. Another, this is another nine or 10 or $11 roll of PLA. I've been using this PLA for years and I've always liked it, but um, it is very inexpensive and it does tend to be very, very brittle. Okay, we're screwed down tight. Let's get this back up. Uh, holding it at the mark. On the count of three, one, two, three. No real damage from the first one. Let's try again. At least no damage that I can see. You might be able to see it better than me. On the count of three, one, two, three. We may have to go to plan B or C. The first one didn't, I think it broke on the third or fourth one. This one seems to be resisting this quite well. 
One, two, three. <laughs> I can't break it. Oh, nothing ever works out the way you think it does, does it? I really don't want to build a weight, build a rig to drop those heavy weights. One, two, three. There we go. That was pretty good. That was what, number four? Let's try number five on it. One, two, three. Oh, now we're getting some damage. Let's go to ten. One, two, three, six, five or six. I've lost count. I may have to have somebody stand here and count for me. I'm just having way too much fun to count. One, two, three. Let's call that one six. I got to adjust my um, pipe a little bit. I just don't want it to come completely out, so I move the pipe about half an inch, maybe at most, if maybe not even that. So we call this seven. One, two, three. how many it's going to take for some of these other filaments, but nine. Wouldn't be any fun if it did it in one. I mean, would it? And number ten, I think. I'll count later when I watch the video. And ten. All right, let's take a look at that and let's see how much damage we did to cheap PLA. Alright, there's how much damage we did to cheap PLA. Let's see if I can get it off of there in one piece. I can. And I'm going to have to zoom back out a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, that weight drove the end of that all the way into the infill. And um, seems to, shockingly enough, still be intact on the inside. But, um, and you can see, let me zoom back in again, it also left quite a bit of um, debris on the, um, on the test rig. So, I think I'm going to wind it, rather than have a, um, another 40 minute long video, which I know you guys hate, nobody watches, I believe that I am going to do this in rounds. I'll do, I'll do the PLAs first, and I'll pick the winner out of there, and then I will um, run PLA off against, say, ABS, and then the winner of that, and then I'll, I'll do it in multiple rounds, you know, PETG against whatever, and I'm, then I'll bring it down into a semifinal, and then I'll do it till I finally have the two best, and yeah, I think I already know how this is going to turn out, I think I already know that nylon and TPU are going to be the best. But the thing about it is, TPU, while it's probably going to survive this without any damage because of how flexible it is, it doesn't really make a very good striking tool. It bounces too much, even on a dead blow. It's, it might be fine if you're trying to move some very soft material, some very soft or brass or, or something like that that you don't want to damage, but it's not going to make a very good striking tool, even with a dead blow. So I have a feeling nylon is going to be the winner, but you know what? I've been really surprised with some of these tests before, so let's see what happens. Please like and subscribe. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think of my rig and predict what you think is going to happen. Talk to you later. Hope you all have a great weekend. Bye for now.